Cool. What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about a tool that lets you import other model types directly into SketchUp with textures working. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you've ever tried to download a model from anywhere but the 3D warehouse into SketchUp, you know it can be really frustrating to get those files to actually work properly. Let's say that we wanted to download a model from Sketchfab, which is a huge repository of 3D models um, for SketchUp. The problem with this is if you, down if you try to download these models, half the time they're in a format SketchUp doesn't understand, and the other half you'll bring them in and the textures won't work the way that they're supposed to. So for example, let's say that I was to try to download this table and chairs by Vilsen Pistori, and I was to click on download. Notice how my options are only going to be FBX, uh, USDZ, GLTF, and GLB. Well, the problem with that is SketchUp doesn't even recognize any of those file types. Luckily, there's a tool for SketchUp called Transmuter that allows you to import different kinds of files. And so this is a great tool. Um, I always go straight to this tool anytime I need to import something that isn't a SketchUp file because it allows me to import other file types and set up the materials, um, both for SketchUp and then also if I have a rendering program, I can do that as well. Um, one other thing to note, this is currently still 50% off right now with this coupon code for a little bit longer. So it might be worth checking out. I'll link to it in the notes down below. Let's say that I wanted to download this table and chairs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and when I first open up Transmuter, it tells me the kinds of files that it works with. So 3DS, DAE, FBX, OBJ, and STL. So in this case, we wanna download the FBX. So we're just gonna click on the download button right here. That's gonna download this into a zip file, which you're then going to need to unzip um, in whatever location you end up placing it in. And so if you unzip this and look at it, notice how it contains a few different things. It contains the FBX, file, which is the actual model, and then also the map of all of the materials that have been baked into a singular image. Now, this is something that SketchUp historically has struggled with, which is why you need something like Transmuter. So if we go to Transmuter, what we can do is we can open up that file by clicking on Browse File, and we can go find that FBX file right here. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring that into this SketchUp viewer, which in, then you can use in order to adjust this, right? And so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna adjust the up axis. A lot of the time, a lot of programs model with Y being the up axis. So we wanna go ahead and we wanna change that. We can also change the size, and it's nice that there's a little scale person in here so that we can see this. So if I was to drop this down maybe like 50%, that size is probably going to look a lot better. So this is just us setting up the sizing for going into SketchUp. Um, the other thing that you can do, and we may look at this more with another model in a second, is you can use this slider in order to simplify your mesh. Now, obviously you do need to be a little bit careful with that because things start looking a little bit funky, but um, you can use this slider in order to do that. There are options down below for you to export a preset up proxy model for V-Ray, Theorenda, Theorender, or Enscape. That allows you to set up things like your normal maps and other things like that. We're not gonna worry too much about that for right now. What we wanna do is we wanna set this up so our materials show up. And so to do that, we're gonna tab into the materials tab right here. And so notice what we want to do is this really only needs one material because it's UV mapped. What we want to do is we want to load in that material file. So in this case, right, we're looking for this base color PNG. Notice how when I tab in on this, this material basically comes in set up the way it needs to go. It's mapped properly and other things like that. And notice how you can see that by looking at like the corners and other things like that. So you can see that you're getting the realistic material in here. Now, if you wanted to, you could load in like your normal map right here by tabbing in here and then export these to um, these rendering engines. We're not going to worry too much about that for right now. What I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to click on the button for transmute. And so when you do that, it's going to ask you where you want to save this. And so for me, I just want to save it in this folder right here. And we're just going to call this table chairs. And so what that does is that saves that as a SketchUp file. Well, then if you jump into SketchUp, you can do a file import and we're going to open that up. So when I do that, notice how that model file is going to get imported into SketchUp right here and I can click to place it. And so the cool thing about this table is it, it maintained the textures that were applied to it. So now I have that in here as a SketchUp model. And so overall, this is a really easy way to import models like this. Now, one thing I do wanna look at is that mesh simplification, because a lot of the time the models um, from an external program are really big. And so let's say we wanted to download a rock into our model. 
So something like this uh, Granite Rock Yellowish Brown from 3D HD Scan, um, which I'll link to all of these in the notes down below, by the way. Um, but let's go ahead and let's download this. And so notice how if we click on the download button, this has 30,000 triangles and 15,000 vertices. So it's a little heavy for SketchUp. It's not horrible, but um, it's a little bit heavy. Um, notice how the download itself is 55 megabytes. And so again, we wanna do the same thing where we adjust the Y value and we also wanna bring the size down. So this one we might bring down to like 10% or something like that, depending how big we want this to be. But notice how this mesh is just heavy. Let's go ahead and let's load the material into this real quick. so that it shows up on our rock in here. So it's just a little bit heavy for what we need, right? Like if this is gonna be a rock that sits in the background, we don't need that level of geometry. But what you can do is you can come down here and you can use the mesh simplification function down here. I'm gonna go ahead and preserve my seams and my normals, but you can use this mesh simplification in here to adjust the, the to adjust the heaviness of this mesh. So if I drag this to the right, notice how what this is doing is this is reducing the number of vertices in here. And honestly, for this rock, I don't really care um, because it's just gonna sit in the background. Notice how it looks very similar, right? So if I rotate around this, then I was to drag this back up, there is a little bit more detail in here, but really not that much. So in the case of this rock, I could reduce this by 80% and get rid of uh, like 24,000 triangles in here with this rock. And I could still set it up with like your different bump maps and other things like that as well. But if we were to take this and let's, let's do this, let's do one of these with no mesh simplification. So we'll just transmute this. And we'll just call this rock full. And then we'll do another one of these with that 80% reduction and we'll transmute that and we'll call it rock reduced. And so if you look at the sizes on this, the rock reduced is 10 megabytes lighter than the rock full that we had in there before. But let's import them into SketchUp and take a look at the difference. And so if you look at these, there's just not that much of a difference. I mean, maybe if you're doing like close-ups, um, then you definitely get a little bit more detail in here around some of these edges than you do on the reduced model. But you can't really tell because a lot of that detail is being filled in by the photo texture. So this can be a massive time saver and performance saver when it comes to importing heavy models into SketchUp. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you think about Transmuter. It's kind of one of my go-tos for any time I have to bring in external models to SketchUp. But um, remember that it is currently on sale um, for a couple more days, so make sure you check that out. I'll link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.